Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and in this tutorial, I'm uh, going to show you how to make some cardboard weapons, swords and a scythe, for uh, predominantly for costume or for Halloween. Halloween's coming up, so you might want to make yourself a nice little weapon to go along with uh, your costume. And uh, I'm focusing on three things here. I'm go I want to make them really easy to make. I want them to be really safe, so I'll show you some safety tips, and I want them to look pretty nice, so. And they came out, and these, these are pretty easy to make. The, the buster sword took me like an, about an hour to make, so that's the most difficult. But the other ones are pretty quick to make, and I'll show you some little tips and hints on how I did that. So here's the buster cloud sword. And this is a uh, this is a real favorite of young kids, especially if they play video games like Final Fantasy. This is the cloud sword, the buster sword. And uh, it actually, the sword actually in the game actually looks like this. It's pretty uh, unique, so kids really love this one. So that's if you're thinking about making a sword, you might want to make this one. Uh, I've also got a scythe here, if you're going to be the Grim Reaper or something like that, or a skeleton, this is kind of nice, a scythe. This is a Wushu sword, or very similar to a cutlass, and you can see it's actually pretty good, it's got some nice, pretty strong, and kind of a traditional sword like this, so. And these swords are all pretty good, they're pretty nice, I use aluminum foil for the, to cover the blades, but you don't have to, you can paint the blades. Aluminum foil works really nice. It gives it a silvery metallic. So um, I'll move right into the tutorial and show you how I made each one of these. And I'm going to be doing a lot of other stuff. I'm going to be doing a few other things. I'm going to be doing some actual real wooden swords. And I'm going to be doing a shield or two, too, in time for Halloween. So let's look over the products here I have here. I have a, you're going to need cardboard. The bigger cardboard boxes, the better. And you're going to need uh, aluminum foil, some duct tape or some regular tape, a masking tape, some kind of wide tape that you can get. Duct tape works really well. It's really very sticky. Um, you're going to need some kind of a long pole or stick. Now, I have a few things here I can show you as an example. You can use a wooden uh, yardstick. It works really well. Some kind of a wooden dowel. Some kind of a wooden, this one's, uh, this is a half inch wooden square, which would work nice too. You should avoid a metal yardstick. I don't want to put any metal in the sword. So try to avoid that if you can. Or you can use, you can even use an old broomstick like I have here. And I found these at a dollar store. It cost me two dollars for the set. And then we're going to use these posts right here, which are really nice, light plastic and long enough. And those, these are going to make some nice swords. So there's an option for you too. So you can scrounge around and look for different things. And try to find yourself some kind of something that's reasonably stiff that you can use inside the center of the sword so it maintains its shape because the sword's going to be cardboard. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make your sword. And the first one that I'm going to make here is, the, is a good one to show you how to make a nice sword out of cardboard. And this is the Buster Sword or the Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy. And this one's a real favorite with kids. They really love this sword. And um, it's kind of uh, odd, even a little unique. But uh, here's, the, here's the basic technique for what you want to do. You cut yourself out one piece of cardboard that's going to be your sword. When you fold it in half like this, this will be your sword blade. So you then you only have one edge to contend with. And then in that, you would mount the handle like this. And tape this down real good with duct tape or masking tape, something really tight. Make sure that's nice and tight. You don't want this flying off if it's swung around. And another thing is, is... If you're using some kind of a stick or a rod or a dowel or something, put a nice big wad ball of masking tape on the end of that to make it safer in case it comes out so this isn't a poking object. So you would just tape that down really good, and I prefer to use ma uh, duct tape because it holds really strong. You want to hold on to it really strong. So then you would do that, and you would fold it over, tape the rest of it closed, and then you've got your sword. Now for the buster sword, cloud sword, I've made the little hilt here a little piece of card out of cardboard. I just made a little box out of cardboard. That's the hilt. And that would go like this. So, so that's what the sword would look like. Now once I get this assembled, I'm going to take this all together and then I'll coat it and then I'll cover it with aluminum foil. Okay, I've got this thing taped in here really nice and tight and it looks really good. And I've made a lot of good contact with the poles of the tape. The duct tape really works well. If you can use duct tape, use that. It's really good. And this thing is not going to come out. That is in there nice and tight. So use the multiple pieces. Don't be bashful with it. Get it nice and tight. You don't want that 
to fly off the stick and then all you have left is a stick. One more thing I wanted to say about um, making a sword out of cardboard like this is corrugated cardboard has a grain in it. You'll see it has lines in it. And when you're making a sword, you should have those lines go this way. That'll be the strongest way. The length of the sword, that's the way the lines should go. You'll see it if you look at the cardboard carefully. Okay, I've finished up making the cloud sword or the buster sword, and it looks good. There you go, take a look. Thing's pretty massive. It's a big sword. <laughs> but, uh, show you a couple of things. See, I've used some masking tape. You can paint this. You can use construction paper. Um, aluminum foil works well. Um, a no little detail you might want to do is put these two dots on it, and the actual cloud sword, there's holes that go through there, but we can't put holes. So we just put two dots there so it looks good. The thing looks good. I've got this little detail here. Looks nice. That thing's ready to go. <clears throat> okay, I showed you how to make the cloud sword, and the cloud sword is kind of easy because you can actually fold cardboard over it. So you can make it out of one piece of cardboard. Um, now, let me show you how to make a wushu sword or a cutlass or a saber or, um, you know, this is a very, almost like a pirate cutlass or a wushu sword, so, um, which has got a nice curve to it. So you, what you do is with a sword like this or a lot of different kinds of swords, you make them in two halves. You cut out two pieces of cardboard that are pretty close to identical. This one, and I haven't cut this one out yet, but I'll be cutting that out. You put your small stick, dowel, um, yard stick, square piece in there, something like that. Even your, um, something thin. Usually a broomstick is a little bit too thick for this. And one important thing is, and secure it down to one of them really good. Make sure that isn't going to slide through or poke out. And on the ends of each, uh, on the, each end of that stick, I wadded up a big ball of uh, masking tape and then taped it over real well so the end of that stick isn't, uh, isn't uh, sharp. It's got a nice ball on the end and it makes it a lot safer in case it breaks through or something like that. So just to be careful like that and make sure it's secured nice and down. So cut out the other half, place it on top, tape them together real good and then aluminum foil and do a little bit of decorating. So that's how you do a lot of different swords like that and I'll, I will show you this one when it's done. Okay, this wushu sword or cutlass is just about done. I wanted you to take a look at it. If you can see that. I added a little detail, but it's pretty strong. It's pretty good. <clears throat> now it needs a little decorating. I decorate it some more, but this came out nice. And this will be a good prop. This will last a while, a nice Halloween prop. And one trick I wanted to show you when you're making any kind of sword like this, if you lose an aluminum foil on the blade, that aluminum foil can be very sensitive and easily chip and tear. And what you can do is use packing tape. This is clear packing tape for boxes for shipping. And cover the whole thing. Wrap it all up with packing tape. That'll make it nice and strong. Then you won't have to worry about that aluminum foil ripping. So, okay, here's a more traditional type of sword. Kind of Middle, e middle Ages, kind of Renaissance kind of sword. Uh, use the same techniques. You make two pieces that are the same. Put some kind of a support in the middle of it. And make sure you put good balls of tape on the end of that so this doesn't become if something if this were to break out or break loose this doesn't become a weapon and of course then I'm going to tape that down really well tape it over close it put aluminum foil on it and I'll show you when it's done okay this traditional sword is done it's uh, pretty strong kind of nice can be used a um, couple of suggestions you know put some decorations on it you know uh, <clears throat> wrap the aluminum foil with packing tape, clear packing tape, so it doesn't damage well, and I would recommend you don't put a point on the tip of this, you round it off like that, so, but, okay, here, I'm going to show you how to make a, a reaper scythe, like this, you just need um, a long stick, a broomstick would be good for this, one inch dowel, I think this is a uh, one inch dowel, and you need to cut yourself two pieces of cardboard, it's going to be mounted just like this. You don't need to put a support in this one. You put it like that, and then you can put the other one right on top of it. And then tape it all together. So it'll be thicker up here, and it'll come to more of a point down here. And it looks better if you have the stick actually stick right through the top of the scythe there like that. So get